I want you to know, Chief, that without your faith in assigning me to this case... Clark. Well, come in, dear, come in. I was just practicing my speech for the luncheon today. And I was setting my watch. You wouldn't want me to be late, would you? Of course not. You know, I think I'll hang it right there. Hang it? The plaque. The award they're giving me at the luncheon today. I can almost see it now. To Agent 700, Hartfield Life and Casualty Company, Sales Award of the Year. Well, I guess I'm ready. Uh, how do I look? Richard Burton never looked better. No kidding. Richard Burton, huh? Look, along about 6 o'clock, why don't you have the boys all slicked up and we'll all go out and have dinner somewhere to celebrate. It's a date. Richard Burton, huh? huh. What do you know? There he goes, my husband, the award winner. Agent 700, Hartfield Life and Casualty Company. Off to his day of triumph. Oh, but I won't even pretend that things have always been this smooth in the Hunter household. In fact, I can remember the first time the chief assigned him to the account that won him the award. Actually, that was only a little more than a year ago. But looking back, it seems like the Dark Ages, BK, before Coratron. The day was unbearably hot, and I was at my usual place. All morning long, my three boys had been conspiring to use up shirts faster than I could iron them. Tim, what are you doing? He's getting a clean shirt. A clean shirt? What do you need another clean shirt for? We're practicing karate in. Karate? You're using my freshly ironed shirts to practice karate in? It was Tom's idea on account of the Chinese writing on them. Oh, you mean he's wearing his too? He looks boss. Clark, Clark, you've got to speak to these boys. What? I said you've got to speak to these boys. Oh, sure. Hiya, fellas. Better run along now. Your mom and I are busy. Well, what can you do? All Clark could think about was making that sale. It was a group policy for Turog and Company that had to be renewed every year. That meant the deal was always up for grabs, and Clark's arch rival, the agent from Maritime Mutual, would be there trying to reach Torog first. So while I ironed, Clark fidgeted. The way I figure it, it'll take nine. Nine? Shirts, I mean. Well, there'll be three preliminary meetings at least with the department heads before I get to Torog himself, and I hear he's a real bug on neatness. How many does that make? Four. Good. Only five more to go. I don't really know what I was ironing for. He was putting the wrinkles back in as fast as I was getting them out. But I stayed at it. Even when that Kitty Baroom called from the office with some last-minute details, I resisted the temptation to listen in. Oh, it isn't that I'm the kind to be jealous of secretaries, but Kitty Varoom, why couldn't she be named something like Hazel Smith or Ethel Jones? Anyway, I finally managed to get Clark away on schedule. By the time the dinner dishes were done and it was time to send the boys packing, I was totally exhausted. They were watching their favorite spy program and they didn't give up easily. Even then, I couldn't get that image out of my mind. Clark driving through the heat. Only now there seemed to be something different about it. It may have been the music from the television show, but I got the strangest feeling there was someone following Clark. There was. It was me. I was about to join Secret Agent 700 in his most harrowing adventure. I don't know how we got there, but we were in a hotel room. Naturally, I was ironing. Don't answer it. Huh? Don't answer it. W why not? It could be a trick. It's the bellboy with the sandwiches I ordered. On the other hand, it could be the department heads stopping me from meeting Torong. We've got to escape. Well, how? Simple. We'll use this cord. We'll tie one end to the bed. We'll throw the iron out the window, and we'll shinny down the cord. No, we can't do that. Why not? How am I going to iron your shirts? Hmm. You have a point there. 
Why don't I just answer it? Helen, please. I'll handle this myself, if you don't mind. Now, here's what we'll do. Yes? First of all, you go over to the door. Yes. Now you say, who's there? Who's there? It's the bellboy with the sandwiches you ordered. You see how easy it is when you just use your head? <laughs> Then, just as quickly, we seem to be somewhere down on the waterfront. This way. Wait a minute. Well, what do you know? Appearing nightly, Kitty Varun. Is that why we're here? Now, cut that out. We're here to find Torog before my shirts wrinkle, and you know it. We've got to be careful. Why? Because this is enemy territory. You're so right, Clarky boy. Clark, who is it? It's the fellow I was telling you about, from Maritime Mutual. Arch rival. Well, uh, you don't scare me, Archie. I just happen to be an expert in karate. Yeah, show me. Ha! Ha ha! Ho ho! Ha ha ha! Ha hoo! Ha ho! Ha! Ah, ah, boy, that's smart. And this is gonna smart even more. Stop! You can't do that! No, just watch me. I don't mean that! I mean that! You're wrinkling my freshly ironed shirt! Oh, I am sorry. I know how hard my wife works to keep the wrinkles out of my shirts. I don't know what came over me. I guess I lost my head. The scene changed again. By a fantastic stroke of luck, Agent 700 had found Torog's address in the telephone book. back, my dear. This could be a trick. I think they used the old bucket over the door trick. There was nothing to do but see if we could get him dried out. It was no use. I knew now that not even my trusty steam iron would ever take the wrinkles out of Agent 700. But suddenly, I was aware of a new problem. A phone seemed to be ringing, but there wasn't any phone. Just the same, I knew I had to answer it. Clark? Clark, is that you? Oh, hello, Mother. It was Clark's mother calling to tell me about an article she'd read. It was about the fast-growing field of no-iron clothing, and she knew how much that could mean to me with three fast-growing boys and a fast-moving husband. The article was titled, Ha! But Is It Coratron? And it went on to explain that in the no-iron field, all kinds of wild and extravagant claims are being made. It suggested that the watchword should be, let the buyer beware, because every woman can quickly see the advantages of the no iron idea. But claims and promises are only as good as the performance behind them. The only way to be absolutely sure is to look for the quality credential of the Coratron trademark. The company's process is so exclusive, it is patented. When you see the famous Coratron name on a garment, you know this is the one that really works. The article told about laboratory tests where Coratron clothes were washed and tumbled dried at least five times and still came out looking freshly pressed. Other clothes that claim no iron invariably fail when put to a side-by-side -side test. They need a touch-up with the iron before they can be worn. In making Coratron clothes, garment manufacturers can go all the way to the top in styling. Important details like plackets, edge stitching on the yoke, double seam stitching at the armhole, the box pleat back, and a hanger loop, for example. Styling details which are simply not available in most so-called permanent press garments. When a garment manufacturer uses the Coratron trademark as well as his own brand name, 
you know you are buying something that really works. As I said, all that happened more than a year ago. Back in the Dark Ages, BK. Since then, you can bet this has been an all Coratron household. Oh, but mind you, I wouldn't go so far as to say that Coratron had anything to do with Clark's winning the award. But one thing is certain. Getting him ready for this year's sales trip was considerably different. Three Coratron shirts fresh out of the dryer, and he was on his way, looking and feeling more confident than ever, and ready to track Torog to his lair. Yes, the nightmare of ironing was over forever. But remember that crazy dream? It was still hanging around. But even that was different. Agent 700 stood before the mirror, adjusting his core.